Hey folks, here are OS Reviews. You're watching our video comparison between Firefox OS versus Ubuntu Touch OS. Both are these mobile operating systems you can find on smartphones, and these two phones have similar hardware specifications as well. And although Firefox OS has since been mostly discontinued, there's still some uh, com community support for it, we see that Ubuntu is still alive with continuous support. However, there are only a handful of uh, hardware that you can buy directly out of the box that's running Ubuntu Touch, whereas Firefox OS had a larger selection of phones that you could pick up and just directly run this operating system with. So taking a quick look at the lock screen, both phones display your notifications, and Ubuntu Touch is a bit more elegant in its implementation of a symbolic clock on the front here in this analog fashion, whereas we have just a digital version up top here. But both will display your quick notifications as they become available, and with Ubuntu it's more like iOS or an older version of Android where you had to physically maneuver this taskbar to unlock it or access the camera directly, um, and that's basically what you can do. There's no access to a notification drawer. On Ubuntu Touch, you can just uh, directly unlock it uh, by swiping from the left or the right, um, but there's also, you can also access the track down notification drawer on the very top here, and of course swipe left to right to change things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, notification settings directly. Uh, with that being said, there is no swipe up to access the camera as a quick launch preference. So launching into the UI itself, we can see that the way that the icons are displayed are both, you know, very uh, kind of colorful as well as elegant, I would say. Um, we have these oversized icons for all your tasks, such as the phone dialer, the messages, contacts, things like that. And the interesting thing about Firefox OS, of course, is that all your applications are mostly stored on the cloud. So in, in terms of uh, your IM clients or most of these apps are really just quick shortcuts to the browser, so it's going to take you to youtube.com for instance, and in this case it's actually quite similar in concept to Chrome OS or Chromebooks where you'll be doing mostly everything on the cloud. And the downside of Firefox OS is, although it's super optimized, if you don't have access to internet such as Wi-Fi or 3G or 4G, then you are in a lot of trouble uh, because there's really only a handful of apps like the gallery, the music, the camera, the FM radio that uh, can be accessed offline. So that's something to quickly point out, but you can use the marketplace to download some other games and apps that don't require internet service 100%. Uh, but so again, to tap on games, you'll see this loading menu of all of these games. It seems like such a giant selection of games, but actually none of these are directly on my phone. All of these from Simon Says, Gem Adventure, most of these are very light, kind of Java-esque games that run directly in the browser. It's just going to take you to a link. So that's what I mean by kind of cloud-based. It seems like you have a massive selection once you first boot up the phone without having to install too much stuff, but uh, they aren't as complex applications, which is uh, not exactly the case with Ubuntu Touch. Ubuntu Touch offers more traditional applications, so if you go through their Ubuntu store, uh, most of these apps will physically install on the phone, and it's not just a shortcut to the browser, in this case Firefox browser, but it's a physical application that uh, will run on its own and uh, requires memory to operate. So it's a uh, you know, kind of different in how these two aspects are managed. Um, otherwise, if we take a quick look at the drag down notification drawers, both of these do have this present, but uh, Firefox OS again has this pretty elegant imp uh, implementation of dividing up the tasks such as notifications, alarms in addition to your battery status, time and date, and uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth into separate tabs that you can use one hand to slide through. Whereas on Firefox OS, just like on Android or iOS, it's a simple uh, one-page view of turning on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, going directly into the full settings page. So I would say that stuff. Uh, on Ubuntu, it's a bit more thoughtful, and uh, it gives you more customization. Once you get used to it, it could be a lot uh, easier to change more complex settings on or off, but on this, it's a bit more simpler from a UI UX perspective. Both of these settings are fairly elegant and nicely designed, and one thing I did notice about both Firefox OS and Ubuntu OS is that it don't seem as optimized as Android uh, where stock and solve Android is at the moment, running on the same hardware, for instance. It doesn't seem quite as snappy on both of these platforms, where if you open up an app, maybe the browser, it's going to take one to two seconds to completely load, and afterwards you can type in your address, for instance. So it's not completely instantaneous. Now, to go back home, uh, what you do on Firefox OS is you tap on the home key. It's a physical control, but on here it's a swipe or gesture-based control completely. But in terms of multitasking, both are very similar. I swipe from the right-hand edge on 
Ubuntu Touch to access my currently open applications, whereas on Firefox, you swipe uh, from the corners uh, once again. So if I go into the dialer pad, for instance, I would swipe from the left to the right to open up my previous application, in this case settings. So it's uh, kind of similar in that way that you can multitask between commonly used kind of applications. I can also tap on this and hold the home button down to kind of see this in the card view that you see also on Ubuntu Touch. So this is where these things are fairly similar in how multitasking is, is operated. And it's a good thing because these swipe gestures make things a lot easier than we saw uh, you know, on older versions of Android, which were a lot more clumsy. Same thing with older versions of Windows mobile phones, if you still remember those. So taking a look at taking a quick look at the keyboards on both of these phones, they're both fairly attractive and uh, easy to type on. They're large and you can also use the horizontal orientation if you tilt the phone using the accelerometer. Both of them will give you predictive text entry as well, and there's multi-touch supported on both phones, uh, which means that you know you can type very quickly without any issues of slowdown or lagging behind, for instance. And you can also tap on here for symbols, same thing here. So both keyboards are excellent and uh, you know very good stock keyboards. So let's take a quick look at the browser next, and this is going to be interesting just because on Firefox OS, of course, we know you know Mozilla because they produce browsers, and that was their original uh, claim to fame. And so with this operating system, it's a browser that really takes uh, key here because it really is a similar experience to what you get on a desktop computer. Um, but on Ubuntu, it's actually surprisingly good as well. It works complex pages really nicely, and uh, load up times are really swift and quick. And on both browsers, you have access to tab browsing. So if I swipe up here, you can see I have an open tab. Same thing here, if I tap on this tab key, I can swipe between kind of cards as my tabs is how it's represented. And it kind of goes up on the very top there as well. So Keyboard, both are very good, can open up complex sites uh, rather quickly. Uh, Firefox is a, bitter, a little bit better at compression, so it's a faster to load up overall, but if you zoom in, it takes a few seconds to render. Uh, Ubuntu is a bit smoother, just like, uh, regular Fire, just like regular Android or iOS browsers are. So there are a few differences in how these are operated, but uh, overall, very good browsing experiences on both. So in terms of a little bit about the history of both of these phones, uh, the original release of Firefox OS and Ubuntu Touch were both in around 2013, and so they've had around the same time to evolve and develop, and they have both evolved. So with Firefox, everything has become vertical now with all your homepage applications, and there's a universal search drawer, whereas on uh, Ubuntu Touch, there's separate pages for your home home screens that you can customize between music, videos, and regular applications. And there isn't a consolidated search client. You can only search with specific programs, such as specific music tracks, specific videos. You can search here for your specific apps, rather than a universal search bar on here. Uh, whereas before, Firefox really did the same thing as Ubuntu and had distributed home screens that you could to the left or to the right to access. And now it's all become vertical, a little bit easier with one hand. But then again, Firefox is a bit simpler than Ubuntu with its gesture support. It's not as cohesive. Um, so at the time, it was a lot more jumpy and seemed disjointed. Uh, but you know, this was a step in the right direction with how this was managed. So if we look at something like, you know, some other utility tasks and how the UI UX uh, is represented, we can look at the clock, for instance, on both and check, a, take a closer look at that. So you can see that uh, both load up fairly quickly, it takes a few seconds there, but both, you know, offer a pretty uh, attractive overall look. Um, on Ubuntu, on uh, Firefox OS, you can also search the web consistently just on the top bar, no matter what app you're on, just tap on there. That searches, again, through the universal search client. But if I close that up again, I have just a clock. I can swipe through for the timer and also a stop. On Ubuntu Touch, I can set a timer or go back to the main screen. You can see that these are kind of like widgets in the sense that they're always going to be moving. And I can also select a city if I want to add something else. and index through all of these cities as well. So they're both very elegant and modern looking. And for um, essentially very kind of baby operating systems, they don't have nearly the same amount of time as Android or iOS to develop. Uh, their first attempt is surprisingly sleek and elegant looking on both accounts. So pretty much that's everything as far as the main setting, settings and utilities are concerned. There are file managers built on on both since it's hard to really get those third parties since there aren't too many apps on both stores, marketplace on here, Ubuntu store on here. Ubuntu store has a few more apps, I believe. Um, and 
you have very comparable multimedia experiences from the gallery. So overall, this paints a very interesting narrative because it was Firefox OS that had more OEMs and manufacturers lined up. So there were more readily available hardware, many at low cost prices aimed at the emerging markets, whereas Ubuntu Touch wasn't as popular because it didn't have its manufacturers, but it's still alive and uh, hopefully we see it really grow and become more popular down the road. Uh, it's a far more powerful mobile OS with a lot more gesture support. It's a bit sleeker in my in my opinion. And the fact that it offers more offline applications in addition to that unique convergence feature uh, so that you can connect it to a monitor and use it as a regular Ubuntu Linux PC. So the idea of having a computer in your pocket, um, it was really co compelling as well as what made this unique. With Firefox, it was just a low cost form factor and, the, and these online applications that didn't require huge amounts of physical storage storage to load and to render. So um, it was really meant for you know places that were emerging and in that case you know Firefox actually worked fairly well. It was simple to use, it was fairly attractive from a UI perspective. And the browser itself was powerful enough to do most tasks that people wanted. On the other high on the other hand with Canonical the Ubuntu Touch OS was a lot more ambitious with its uh, convergence feature with its super sleek experience and the fact that it was you know, plan to be released more as a direct competitor to the likes of Android and Windows Phone. So, you know, hopefully we still see more products released with this operating system directly in the future, but um, it's really meant more as a premium mobile OS. And hence, it makes sense since uh, it does do a lot more than Firefox OS. And as far as comparing features per feature, I have to say that Ubuntu Touch is superior uh, as well as sleeker. Uh, but, you know, from a visual perspective, both are beautiful and certainly shake up the mobile OS industry by providing alternative to the pre-existing uh, kind of norms of Android and iOS as these two giants that we've come to really see time and time again. So thanks for watching this video comparison between these two interesting mobile OSs, both which originated in 2013. Here at OS Reviews, this was a closer comparison between Firefox OS and Ubuntu Touch.